If we stay in the land of the weird, you mentioned general relativity. You've uh, <laughs> you've contributed uh, to the mathematical understanding of Einstein's field equations. Can you explain this work? And uh, from a sort of mathematical standpoint, uh, w what aspects of general relativity are intriguing to you, challenging to you? I have worked on some equations. There's something called the, the wave maps equation, or the sigma field model, which is not quite the equation of space-time gravity itself, but of certain fields that might exist on top of space-time. Um, so Einstein's equations of relativity just describe space and time itself. Um, but then there's other fields that live on top of that. Uh, there's the elect electromagnetic field, um, there's uh, things called yang Mills fields, and there's this whole hierarchy of different equations, of which Einstein is considered one of the most nonlinear and difficult. But relatively low on the hierarchy was this thing called the wave maps equation. So it's a wave which at any given point uh, is fixed to be like on a sphere. Um, so uh, I can think of a bunch of arrows in space and time, and, 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 and the arrows are just pointing in, in different directions. Um, but they propagate like waves. If, if, if you wiggle an arrow, it, was, it will propagate and, create, and make all the arrows move kind of like uh, sheaves of wheat in the wheat field. And I was interested in the global regularity problem again for this question. Like, is it possible for, for all the energy here to, to, to collect at a point? So the equation I considered was actually what's called a critical equation, where it's actually the behavior at all scales is roughly the same. Um, and I was able barely to show that um, that you couldn't actually force a scenario where all the energy concentrated at one point, that uh, the energy had to disperse a little bit, and the moment it disperses a little, little bit, it, 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 would, it would stay regular. Yeah, this was back in 2000. That was part of why I got interested in Navier Stokes afterwards, actually. Yeah, so I developed some techniques to um, solve that problem. So part of it is it, it was, um, this problem is really nonlinear uh, because of the curvature of the sphere. Um, there's, there was a certain nonlinear effect, which was a non perturbative effect. It was when you sort of looked at it normally, it, it looked larger than the linear effects of the wave equation. Um, and so it was hard to, to keep things under control, even when your energy was small. But I developed what's called a gauge transformation. So the equation is kind of like an evolution of, of, of sheaves of wheat, and, and they're all bending back and forth. And so there's a lot of motion. Um, but like, if you imagine like stabilizing the flow by attaching little cameras at different points in space, which are trying to move in a way that captures most of the motion, and under this sort of stabilized flow, the flow becomes a lot more linear. I discovered a way to transform the, the equation to reduce the amount of, of nonlinear effects, um, and then I was able to, 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 to solve the equation. I found this transformation while visiting my aunt in Australia, and I was trying to understand the dynamics of all these fields, and I, I couldn't do it with pen and paper. Um, and I had not enough facility of computers to do any computer simulations. So I ended up closing my eyes, being on, on the floor, and just imagining myself to actually be this vector field and rolling around to try to, to see how to change coordinates in such a way that somehow things in all directions would behave in a reasonably linear fashion. And uh, yeah, my aunt walked in on, on me while I was doing that, and she was asking, "What are that? Oh, what am I doing doing this?" It's uh, complicated. Is the yeah, answer. yeah, and you know, she said, <laughs> okay, fine. You know, you're a young man. I don't ask questions. 